I'm Chen Wen for Gotta Be Mobile, and today we're going to take a look at the MiFi 2372 Intelligent Hotspot for AT&T. The device is made by Novatel and follows the CDMA versions, which have been available on Sprint's and Verizon's network. The AT&T's network is compatible with the network's uh, with the carrier's uh, 3G GSM network, which supports upload speeds of up to 5.7 megabits and download speeds of up to 7.2 megabits. In real life testing, I found upload speeds to be around 1 to 2 megabits per second and the download speeds to be between 1 and 3 megabits per second. The device is more curved than the uh, CDMA version and it is a little bit more um, slightly larger because of the curves that are going on on the top side. The device is relatively clean except for a glossy front cover and a matte uh, rubberized finish on the back. On the front you do have one power button and there are discrete lights that are hidden inside the bezel here which will indicate the Wi-Fi connection along with the signal and other connections that are going on with the network. We're going to go over that in just a second. The MiFi 2372 is relatively clean on the top surface. It is a black glossy finish which does attract fingerprints and bears the AT&T logo along with the MiFi branding. There's a power button here and the power button also lights up different colors to indicate network strength, connections, and availability. For instance, a solid purple color indicates that, is, that the device is connected to AT&T's 3G network which is a UMTS or HSPA connection. A Blue network indicates roaming and green indicates that it is on a GPRS or Edge 2G connection. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Red means that it is not connected to a network and it does take a while for the device to search and now it's flashing. Right here on the bezel, once a Wi-Fi connection has been established, you do see a Wi-Fi logo which we'll circle back to in just a moment. On the other side of the device, you'll find that there is a micro USB charging port you can connect this to a charger or to the computer and unlike previous MiFi units this device will allow you to still broadcast over Wi-Fi so you don't have to connect the device and tether via USB. There's also a micro SDHC card slot which accommodates card sizes up to 32 gigabytes. This means that you can plug in a memory card with files on it and you can share files on the MiFi network. So this device can tether up to five different connections on it. So if you have a small work group going on and you need to share a file, you can go ahead and do so with the micro SDHC card. On the back of the device, you do have the back battery cover, which uh, removes to reveal a back battery. There is also a uh, GSM card, a SIM card underneath the back battery. Also, there's a sticker here, which indicates um, the device's SSID name. So here, the SSID ends in a 9764. So if you're connecting it with a computer over Wi-Fi, you'll look for this SSID and also enter in the Wi-Fi key to hop onto the network. As we're looking back here, we do see a Wi-Fi light that has been lit up. So it does show that the MiFi has connected or is broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal and a flashing purple light here shows that it is that a 3G connection is available. Once a user connects to the MiFi, the flashing light will turn solid to show that it is connected. Let's go ahead and take a look at the interface on the computer. So here we have the Lenovo U260 Ultra Portable Laptop, which you can take a look at the review on Notebooks.com. I'm going to go ahead and post the review link on the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and connect the MiFi, um, our computer, to the MiFi network. The MiFi allows up to five internet connections, so you can have up to five laptops or smartphones or devices such as a uh, Nintendo DS connected to the, uh, to the MiFi to share AT&T's mobile broadband connection. So I've got, I went ahead and located the MiFi SSID on the computer and we're going to go ahead and enter the security key which is located on the back of the MiFi unit here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now.
So now the computer is connected and there is a, an internet connection here. As you can see here, the purple light on the MiFi's power button has turned to a solid purple color from a flashing purple that you saw earlier. Let's go ahead and open our Internet Explorer web browser and access the MiFi user interface. The MiFi itself supports the MiFi OS, which supports uh, different widgets and connections. To access the uh, MiFi user interface, all you have to do is type in um, att.myfi, or you can type in uh, 192.168.1.1 on your browser and it will open up the landing page which you will have to accept the end user license agreement. So this is the MiFi user interface and right now there is uh, geolocation support. The MiFi does have GPS support so you do see um, two widgets, one for geo search and another for the weather and you can go ahead and pull it up based on GPS location. Right now it's not pulling it in because we're in a weak uh, GPS signal area so GPS isn't available. You can go ahead and access other settings of the device by going through and changing the AT&T connection or the uh, UMTS connection as well. This is the MiFi OS user interface. It shows you the telephone number that the MiFi is connected to if you have an account at the top left hand screen and just various settings and options, uh, text messages if you want to respond to text via the SIM card in your MiFi unit. I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. Thanks for watching this video review of the MiFi 2372 Intelligent Hotspot for AT&T made by Novatel.